Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, Condo Insider uh, is the uh, YouTube show uh, about condominiums and uh, people who live and uh, work with condominiums. And uh, I have a role. One of my uh, hats is uh, president of the uh, nonprofit Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners. And for uh, many years, I've been involved for about 30 years. But for many, many, many years, I mean, and this, the, the uh, council was started by Aaron Cheney of the Cheney Brooks uh, uh, Realty Firm. So it's been around for uh, over 40 years and it's been advocating for condominiums and, uh, you know, all that time. And now we are, you know, advocating for condominiums and uh, 421J homeowner associations and co-ops. Uh, and you know, the, the, those types of uh, developments are called com common interest developments, mainly because uh, you're talking about uh, uh, the members of these associations who own living units. And in a condominium, the living unit would be a condominium, an apartment. And for a 421J uh, association, uh, the, the membership unit would might, might be a single family home or a townhouse. And in a, a, a co-op situation, the living unit would be an apartment lease uh, and the member would be a shareholder. But anyway, all of these different developments are called common interest developments because they, what they have in common is that the members have an ownership interest in some sort of real property uh, and they own the in common with everybody else in the development, uh, certain portions of the real estate, like the hallways, the elevators, the swimming pool, the parking garage, these are all called common elements. In other words, uh, you you have a partial interest in them because you own a unit in the development. So anyway, uh, in the legislature this year, there was a bill called House Bill 1509, and uh, that was passed into law, and now it's Act 189. And what it uh, dealt with was uh, common interest developments. And what, what it does, what it does is it, it basically deals with the, uh, the, the uh, 421J uh, planned uh, community associations. And these would be the townhouses and single family residences that are located mainly, most of them are located uh, on the west side out in Eva, in the Eva Plains, you know, where you've got all that new development out of Mililani. And so uh, these, these are the 421J uh, community development, uh, planned community associations. And that's the, the statute that governs that one is 421J. And what we've been hearing, you know, from, from a lot of uh, uh, HOA members over the years is, you know, how come we don't have subsidized mediation? How come we can't do RICO claim? And RICO, RICO is something called uh, Regulated Industries Complaint uh, Office Claims. And uh, what that means is that it, uh, uh, if you're a condominium, then you have certain rights uh, because the uh, uh, condominiums are regulated uh, by uh, the uh, a, a government agency called the Department of Commerce and Com Com Consumer Affairs and uh, the Real Estate Commission. And uh, the condominiums are registered. They pay an annual fee and the annual uh, uh, you know registration fee, every, I think it's paid every two years. And they, they have something called a condo and that money goes into something called a condo ed fund, condo education fund. And some of that money, uh, you know, can, it can be used, uh, you know, to uh, to pay to educate, to pay for seminars, and it is uh, it is uh, also available to subsidize uh, mediation uh, that is uh, used to uh, resolve disputes between the owners and the boards, and that's something that you know uh, is um, uh, very useful to, to owners. 
and and associations because this means that you know it is the the, the people who are hired to act as neutrals they're the ones who you know assist the uh, the two parties to uh uh discuss the dispute if, uh, through a process called mediation and uh the neutral mediator you know tries to assist both sides uh to come to some solution that might not make either side very happy but at least they can live with the the decision that they've they, that they've made and the um mediator is paid for by the condo ed fund uh and uh and people and members who live in uh, 421J, I mean, they kind of heard about it and they want to know how come they don't, you know, how come they can't, you know, when they do mediation, because they can do mediation, but they have to pay out of their pockets for the neutral mediator. They're saying, how come the condo people can get subsidized mediation and we can't? And, you know, um, how come, you know, the condo people uh, have rights under RICO? RICO is the Regulated Industry Complaint Office. And that's because uh, the condos are regulated by the DCCA and the 421J units are not. And so, so that's what, the, 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 that's basically in a nutshell, uh, what five of what this bill 1509 is all about. And so two task forces were set up and the task force uh, are supposed to be made up of public, uh, community people and uh, public officials, like, you know, the people who uh, are elected officials, and they're going to be meeting to discuss these issues. And for the 421J group, there's two, two, two task forces that are going to be set up. One is for 421J, and the other one is for 514B issues. And, uh, and these uh, task forces are being set up right now. Uh, as we speak, I got a, an email yesterday from the DCCA saying, uh, you know, giving me dates of available, and this, they asked me, what dates are you available? We're trying to set up a meeting for September. Uh, and and the reason why we have, and, and you, you'll see it scrolling uh, on, on the page, and that's our email address. And for our listeners, for our listeners, if you live in a 421J unit and you have a, an issue that you want to, this task force to discuss, you can email us. And, and I will make sure that, you know, because Hawaii Council is a member of, uh, I think we're going to be a member of both task force. I know we're a member of one. Uh, and uh, we will make sure that, you know, these issues, you know, are brought to the attention of the task force uh, who will be deliberating the issues. And then what the task force is doing is, it's a two-year task force to begin with. And they are going to make a a, a report uh, to the legislature. So it's, it's two years. So that means that it's going to be set up. Maybe the first meeting will be in September, and that means the first session is going to be very short because you know the legislature starts in January of 2024. So we have to have a report uh, by December for that January session if we're going to be doing any new changes any new uh, provisions to 421J or 514B and uh, so that the legislature can act on it. And then um, because this is a two-year task force, the task force will remain in effect and it will be uh, meeting and uh, deliberating and examining issues, you know, for all of 2024. And in December of 2024, it's going to do a final report to the legislature for 2025, for the 2025 session that begins January of 2025. Okay, so let's get started on you know uh, you know what um, uh, some of the issues are going to be for 421J. As I told you, uh, because condominiums are registered, they're required to be registered with the DCCA, and that is a government agency called uh, as the State of Hawaii Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. And they have uh, a, a group called the Real Estate Branch that is part of the DCCA. And they are the ones who have oversight over condominiums. And so, um, and, and, and that, uh, the real estate group also has uh, uh, oversight over realtors and brokers. And as many of uh, you know, the realtors uh, are, uh, are usually the ones that 
are doing the property management or the managing, you know, or are or, or involved as uh, uh, site managers. And so if they, if you feel that, you know, those, uh, those parties are not behaving appropriately, I mean, you can make a claim in the DCCA and, uh, and they will uh, pursue those claims for you, you know, because uh, the realtors are licensed by the state of Hawaii. And if you feel that they are violating terms of their license, then you can, you know, uh, you can uh, complain to the DCCA and they will do an investigation. And, uh, but right now, uh, because uh, the uh, 421J units are not being regulated and, 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 uh, and the DCCA doesn't have oversight over them, uh, they don't have that right to complain about those entities, whereas condominium um, members can, and they do. Uh, uh, complain about the managing agents and uh, site managers. And, you know, uh, in the past, when we've, you know, when, when we've brought these things, when these things have been raised uh, and, and the DCCA is at the legislative hearings, you know, they've said, oh, well, you know, we, can, we can't agree to that law because that's more work for us to do. But, you know, my, my response to that is, look, you know, uh, if you're going to be doing registration, of these entities, which would be 421J uh, associations, then you're going to be charging them, just like you charge condominiums for their, you know, uh, annual biannual. They're called biannual. Every two years, you you, you know, we pay, uh, you know, we pay uh, to the to the um, DC, the state of Hawaii. And you know, when when this whole thing started way back when, when the condo ed fund started for, for under 514B. Uh, I think the fee was it was it was close to a dollar, so it was a dollar a unit. So if you had a one hundred unit condominium, you would be paying a hundred dollars every two years. And uh, I hear that it's up to like ten dollars now. So if it's up to ten dollars now, that means for a one hundred unit condominium, you'd be paying a thousand dollars every other year. And when you think about it, that's really not that expensive for the kind of work that the DCCA has to do uh, in registering you and uh, and you know basically you know uh, setting up and 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 the DCCA has these uh, condo specialists. I think they've got three or four, uh, and so you can call them if you have a problem. If you're a condominium owner, uh, if you're a 421J member, uh, you don't have that right. Or that privilege, uh, and but if you were registered, if you're required to be registered uh, by the state of Hawaii, then uh, you would they would probably have to set up, you know, uh, an HOA specialist, you know, to deal with 421J questions that owners and members may may you know may uh, uh, ask of uh, uh, you know the, the the DCCA. So anyway, you know the the RICO rights and remedies. In other words, you know, it, once the 421J uh, people become registered and they have, and DCCA has oversight over them, then they would be able to make complaints about their managing agents and uh, they would be able to make claims and, you know, get uh, some investigation involved. Uh, and, and I don't think that that's going to be unduly burdensome for the DCCA because they're going to be getting paid money uh, for the registration. Uh, and, um, and so that would allow them to hire people to do the registration if they're complaining that, you know, it's just too much work for them. And also that money that is collected is going to be set up in a special fund. And for condominiums, that special fund is allowed to be used for subsidized mediation. So that means that if you have a dispute uh, an old, between an owner and a board and, or the board and the, the, the managing agent or you know, whomever, you, know, you have to look at the statute, then you're entitled to use the, uh, the, the, the education fund because it's set up for dispute resolution. Uh, it's targeted you know, it's for that specific purpose. Uh, to pay for these uh, expert mediators 
uh, to try to help you uh, in resolving your disputes. And um, and another thing that uh, that the 514B has that 421J doesn't have is they have a very uh, comprehensive mediation program. Uh, in fact, there's something called evaluative mediation. I mean, the 421J statute only talks about mediation generally, but the 514B statute has talks about two types of mediation, evaluative and facilitative. And facilitative just means that you have a, a professional meeting with both sides and trying to get the two sides to come to an agreement. And evaluative mediation uh, is is, is it requires somebody with a little bit more expertise in condo law, and what what the uh, and and this uh, uh, trained neutral uh, is her his or her job is to try to get the two parties to come together uh, with a solution that they can live with, and they get a written opinion as to the strengths and weaknesses of their their relative. Uh, positions. And this way, it basically says, tells you, if you're one of, if you're one of the parties in this mediation, that you get a lousy case. And if, and, and if you want, you know, if you go, if you want to go further, if you don't get it resolved in the mediation and you want to go further, like arbitration or even filing a lawsuit, then you better think twice because, you know, here you have a professional and uh, a mediator. And, you know, when you do evaluative mediation, it's usually a retired judge or a retired uh, attorney who has experience with condo law. And so if they tell you you got a lousy case, I think you can take that to the bank and these, and you figure, okay, I better settle this now in mediation while you know the, the education fund is paying for the mediator. It's not coming out of my pocket. And so, uh, you know, so I mean, that's, that's the value of that provision. And I think, I'll, 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 and I know, that 421J members want that. They want the subsidized mediation. And with and, and in the uh, condo law, 514B, if the board, if you ask for evaluative mediation, the board must do evaluative mediation. They are required to do it. It's mandatory. And if they drag their feet and they say, oh, they make excuses, then you take them to court to compel mediation. And the stat in the in the 514B, the condo statute, allows you to recover up to fifteen hundred dollars from that um uh you know, you know, from the the board that is uh, dragging their feet and you know not mediating with you. Um and you know, you're in, entitled to, you know, uh recover that. And so, you know, that's a provision that, you know. That they want, and you know, there's an, uh, there's one more final thing that is in 514B that the 421J people have told me that they wanted, and in 514B there is a statute. It comes at the very end of the set in the, in the in the law that says that an owner, a member, is protected against uh, retaliation by the association, the board, managing agent, or the site manager. So if you feel that you as a member are being retaliated against by any of these entities, then you have a claim that you can make against them. And the statute provides for remedies. And right now, if you're, for, you're a 421J member, you don't have that, but condo owners have it. And so it's really, uh, you know, that one's really, really important. And, and unfortunately, I mean, we had a case where retaliation was the key uh, component. And that case went to, uh, 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 I, think it was, uh, I think it was in mediation, or no, it was in litigation. It was in litigation. And it was settled just before trial. And, and, and the settlement means that we don't have a court ruling on whether the, the uh, homeowner and the homeowner was the one who was claiming that he was being retaliated against because he took action. He, he he claimed that he was a whistleblower. And then because he blew the whistle on the board, uh, they didn't like it. Uh, you know, they took they retaliated against him. 
And be, and that one was going to trial. And but before it went to trial, it settled, and it settled for a lot of money. Uh, I think it was. I mean, it uh, it was several hundreds of thousands of dollars, according to uh, Civil Beat. But you know, so but we don't have a ruling on it. But you know, the fact that you know you can file a lawsuit for retaliation, and then a settlement gets several hundreds of thousands of dollars means that you know that at least. You know, if you think you've got a claim, you can make the claim. With 421J units, you just can't do it. And so anyway, so those are some of the things that I think 421J people want. And that's one of the, the things that we'll be talking about in the task force. And if you, a listener, if you are a member of a 421J uh, uh, association and you have other things that you, 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 you know, you want, uh, you have concerns about, Please email us and we will make sure that the task force uh, is brought to the attention of the task force. The second task force is looking at mediation re dispute resolution uh, under 514B. And as I told you, uh, 514B has got, you know, mediation, two types of mediation, facilitative and evaluative. And we have uh, arbitration. But we're focusing on mediation because, you know, mediation is 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 the one that many uh of the uh, people go to and i but you know if you look at the numbers there aren't a whole uh, i think the numbers that came from the real estate commission was there were maybe there was less than 70 there was less than 100 disputes that went through mediation and the numbers we got and and i i, I don't have the, the 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 specific numbers with me but half of them mediated to some resolution and the other half did not they they never went through mediation but the good thing was and this was evaluated mediation which means that they either got a verbal or a written opinion telling them that one and one of them didn't have a very good case or maybe both of them didn't have a very good case because those parties didn't go further in other words, none of those people who you know, who didn't complete me mediation, none of them filed for arbitration. None of them filed a lawsuit. And I know, I mean, I, I, there have been uh, we have had discussions about this um, from both sides. I've heard, and there are people who said, "Oh, you know, mediation doesn't work. Look at that. You had uh, almost a hundred cases, and half of them didn't even finish the mediation." But the prop, but the good thing that came out of that is. The ones that didn't complete the mediation didn't go in any further. So it ended. And I think that's what everybody wants. In other words, you don't have to complete a mediation, but if you go through the mediation and for some reason it stops and you don't go any further, that means that you have resolved it because if you hadn't resolved it, then somebody, the, the one who's not happy with what happened, will file a lawsuit or go to arbitration. And, you know, and, and, and I think in the discussions with 514 and uh, 15, uh, uh, House Bill 1509, there, there was some discussion that they didn't think that pe there were some people, some folks who didn't think that the mediation program was effective. And, you know, I disagree with that. And, you know, you, you, you look at the numbers, uh, there, you know, there's, there's almost 2000 condominiums in the state of Hawaii. And, you know, and, and I think the, the population of the state of Hawaii is about a million. And so, you know, I would think that, you know, you, you could safely say that about a third of the people, a third of the population, maybe about 300 to 350 people, 300,000 people live in condominiums. Okay. And if you go out of that, out of those thousands of people, you've got a hundred people going through mediation. And of the hundred, half of them resolved it by completing the mediation. The other half didn't resolve it, but they didn't go any further. I think the system's working. I, you know, I, I to me, you know, if if if, if uh, the half that didn't complete the mediation filed lawsuits, then I'd say, yeah, the, the system's not working because nobody wants to end up in a lawsuit. And let me tell you, uh, I'm I'm a litigator been litigating for 40 years in the state of Hawaii. And I can tell you, ju judges hate condominium disputes. And I get scolded. I get scolded. I mean, people, because of my advocacy, I guess, you know, the judges think I'm a public figure and they, 
they recognize that, you know, you know, they see me on television and, you know, I've been advocating for condominiums for all these very many years. I get scolded. I, you know, I, you know, I get yelled at by judges. How come you people can't get along? You know, how come you end up suing people, each other and ending up in the courtroom? The judges, let me tell you, the judges get don't like the cases. They they hate both sides. Don't think you're going to get a sympathetic judge. The minute the judge finds out it's a condo dispute, I mean, I don't know what happens. The horns go up and all of a sudden they want to, you know, rush you off to mediation or arbitration. But anyway, they want you off their docket. They don't want you in their courtroom because they think the disputes are stupid and petty. And they don't understand why you have to take up uh, public time and money to, to have some third party resolve your dispute, you know, for you. And so that's what I mean. You know, if, if you have a dispute, there is a mechanism. Uh, if you're if you're if you live in a condo, you have you can do mediation, you can do arbitration. If you do mediation, it's subsidized. And if you ask for evaluative mediation and they won't do it, you can go to court, hire an attorney, go to court, and the court's going to sign that order in a, in a in a heartbeat. There's not going to be you know, that's not and and you you can recover up to fifteen hundred dollars, you know, from from the other side who won't who do, who refuse to participate. And, you know, um, you know, so, so I just think that, you know, with respect to the um, task force for, for condominiums, if people want to, you know, chime in and, you know, uh, 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 give us examples uh, or, or, or our ideas on how to make it better, I mean, we would be happy uh, to entertain them. I just think that the, the system we got in place right now is working. Um, and it it doesn't seem, uh, you know, and and you know, with with, with mediation, you don't need an attorney. Uh, I I I can't emphasize that enough. You really don't need an attorney because you know when you do these mediations, uh, you know, the um, the uh, the mediator is just looking at facts and try and will and is trying to use their. Uh, professional training to help you uh, reach a result that's going to allow both of you to live with the resolution. They're not they, they're not gods or you know geniuses, and they don't know all the answers. I mean, their job is to try to help you reach some solution that you can live with. Okay, and so that's what they're trained to do. And you know from all I've been hearing about the programs, it seems to be working. But I'm be I'd be happy to hear from uh, those of you who, who who have not had good experiences, uh, and if you share them, we will take them to the task force. And um, it I've uh, gotten the information that my time is my my time is uh, up, and so I thank you for joining us for this uh, session of Condo Insider. I hope I've been able to pass on some. Uh, uh, information that's helpful. And I hope that you will join us next week uh, for another episode uh, of Condo Insider, which is the program for uh, people who live in condos and work with condos and condo uh, uh, members. Thank you and a, ma a mahalo.